Hey everybody, happy Thursday. Welcome to another edition of Coaching from the Couch. I am your host, C. Wall. As always, it is a pleasure to join you all virtually to talk about our favorite teams in the DMV, DC Sports. One day we're going to decide which one I'm going to say. But I'm going to give you all a minute to join because as you know, we come together every single Thursday evening to chat. This Thursday is no different. I would like to say, as we always do, when is there a dull moment in DC sports? And that would be never. But it was a little quiet this week. We're not going to say it was dull. Because it's never dull. But it was a little quiet. Just a tad bit quiet. So I want everyone to say hello to my mom. Mama Waller. She has joined as she always does. Good evening to Daryl. I see you on here as well, Cameron Mingo. How are you? How are you doing? Let's give everybody a chance to come on in the virtual room. I see Kenneth Lash joining. As always, got to do the rundown of what's happening in sports. We absolutely have to do a rundown. I see Isaac has joined. I see Damon is joining. You all, we can jump right on in. But first, we have to make sure that you are sharing this show with your DC sports loving family and friends. Because you can always watch the show at another time. You can always watch it later. But you all know that we have a blast watching it live. So we can all get the, the conversation going. So y'all ready to talk some sports? Y'all ready? Let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and do this. So I have a couple of Capital City Go-Go updates. We got some Capital City Go-Go updates, y'all. So, a press release was sent out this evening announcing six priority, they're calling them priority home games for the NBA G League season, uh, the Capital City Go-Go. So, here are the dates. So, the home opener at the Entertainment and Sports Arena is Saturday, November the 6th. Then they're mentioning Friday, January 8th, Friday, February 4th. Wednesday, February 9th, that's STEM and Basketball Education Day. Saturday, March the 12th, and then April the 1st is Fan Appreciation Day. So I want to make sure that those dates are out there. Did y'all write them down? Eugene, did you get that? Dez, did you get that? Saturday, November 6th. The home opener, for certain. For certain. So these must be, Des, I see your question. The G League is saying these are their six priority home days, and it could just be priority home day, um, home game days for the Capital City Go-Go, where they're going to have events going on. The home opener for certain is November the 6th. STEM and basketball is Wednesday, February 9th, and then April 1st will be Fan Appreciation Day. So the other three dates will more than likely be another type of fan or themed event. So make sure you all note that. And while you all are noting that, I need everybody to say what's up to Seawall team member Joy. You know, she always gets you all right in the chat. Everybody say what's up to Joy. 
Mystics update. Mystics, mystics, mystics. Wow. The mystics are dealing with so many injuries, you all. So many injuries. So we already knew that Elena Deladon is out. Still with her back issues. She's absolutely still out. Then we have Kiera Leslie who's dealing with, she's in concussion protocol. Erica McCall is out with a right knee sprain. Myesha Hines Allen with a left tendon strain. Natasha Cloud with a right ankle sprain. This is one, two, three, four, five players out. So earlier this week, the Mystic Sign Center, Megan um, Gustafson. And so she's been playing this week with the team. Injuries after injuries. Um, they were able to get this hardship signing by the WN by the WNBA because the team had fewer than 10 healthy players available. So because they had less than 10 healthy players available, the league said you can have a hardship signing. So they were able to sign um, Megan earlier this week. Um, Megan is six foot three. She was a second round pick out of Iowa in the 2019 WNBA draft. So Let's see what happens. Let let's see. Let's see how let's see how they work. Let's see how they operate. But definitely the Mystics are very very short-handed. Um and better news with the Mystics. Um two of the Mystics players, we got to shout them out and congratulate them for making the US Olympics women's basketball team. Um Tina Charles and Ariel Atkins. Shout out to them. We've been shouting out Tina Charles like every week because she's out here rocking and rolling. So shout out to Tina and Ariel. They have both accepted the invitation to be members of the women's basketball Olympic team. So we want to wish them the best as they start to prepare for the Olympics. Nats fans. Nats fans, Nats fans, Nats fans, check in, check in, check in. Where are you? Like, love emoji. Make sure you're sharing the show with your fellow Nats fans because we got Nats coming up next. We're going to talk a bit of Wizards. And I always have to close out with the Washington football team because that's just what we do around here. But Nats. So listen, the Nats are playing right now. They're playing in Miami. They're down in South Beach playing the Marlins. But here's what I wanted to talk about with the Nets, or basically Major League Baseball overall. So this week, the MLB started um, the ban on players who use foreign substances. Meaning, in a foreign substance, is anybody aware of this? Right, because I thought this was so interesting that this finally has gone through. So basically, the league will now suspend a pitcher, you know, for 10 days with pay if they are found to have a foreign substance. Um, foreign substance meaning, uh, I'm reading it here, uh, Wiley use sunscreen and Rosen combination or spider tack, which is an industrial glue that some pitchers may use. It's a grip enhancement. So if players, if a pitcher is found to have that, they could be ejected from the game and suspended 10 days with pay. So when the Nats were taking on the Phillies, Max Scherzer, old Mad Max, blue-eyed Max, was checked during the game, not one time, not twice, three whole times. And, and Isaac, I see you've already commented. Listen, that was crazy. Y'all, this even caught, this situation even caught the attention of my mama. Mama Walla had to get on the phone with me and say, what happened? What are they checking him for? What are they doing? The Phillies wanted him checked 
three times. It was something else. Now, granted, Max didn't have anything. But I thought this was so interesting because coaches and the managers can ask for the pitcher to be checked mid-game. This is not a before the game or after the game situation. This is literally during the game, stop the game, I want him checked. I, I want him checked. And they will literally stop the game and check the pitcher for any foreign substances. And I am I think we should watch this closely. Here's why. First of all, it's a distraction. It is absolute distraction. And not only that, that something like that could change the momentum of a game. So say you got a Mad Max out there, you got a Strasburg out there, and they're doing what they do, striking people out. If that if the opposing team manager says, I want I want him checked, he's touching his hair too much, he's touching he I think he's got a substance on him, the game can literally be stopped. And the checking has to take place. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I feel like this is something they should probably do before the game. Or maybe right before they go out there. I mean, what's going on? I'm like, this is really odd. And really strange. So, let's keep an eye out and see how this continues to materialize and how it goes down throughout the league. Because very similar to Isaac. I was like, come on, Girardi. You, you, you're getting a little out of hand here. It's getting a little out of hand. The Nets are picking up. The Nets are playing well. And Mike Lyles, I see you. I don't know if you've been, the, the Nets are picking up. Remember, we talked about this last week. Hey, listen, when they get into a 10-game stretch, we already know what the deal is because they're so far behind. They have got to win the majority of their games in the 10-game stretch. So the Nets are picking up momentum. But I'm going to go back to the point of, you know, checking during the game with the foreign substances. That's that's going to be a lot. Now, here's one thing that I thought was very cool, and it was kind of funny, because the next day when the Nets played the Phillies again, it was so funny to me. Max, Mad Max and Ryan Zimmerman, when Bryce Harper came up to the bat, they had to tease their old teammate for a bit and was out there heckling him and, and yelling to the umpires to check his hair and to check him out because who knows what Bryce has in his hair. You all remember. Now, we don't cover Bryce anymore because Bryce, is he's a Philly. But y'all remember, and if you saw any of the games, Bryce Harper hair still look good. It still looks nice. So I thought that was kind of funny. They were like, uh-uh, you going to go through all this? With, with Max, and let me tell y'all something. I'm going to go back for a minute on Max. Max was, Max, after that third time, Max had time for Girardi. He was like, listen, that, that stare down was mean, wasn't it? I felt that stare down. And Girardi got mad. And the reason why he got so mad, okay, yeah, when you stare somebody down like that, the, the stare is like, fighting words even though nothing's being said you know what that grit means you know what that stare down means but i also think gerardi was a little embarrassed because that was excessive you've already checked him once now you're checking him again and now you're checking for a third time and it's making you look crazy so mad max for the win the washington nationals are picking up and, of course, anytime you can see a team that's still that much of family, that they can take a situation that irritated them to the utmost and still make a joke out of it. You know, joking with their former teammate, you got to love it. You got to love it. But I'm anticipating this to be an issue as time goes on. More to come on that. More to come on that. Wizards fans, are there any Wizards fans here? And when you have shared the show, did you tag in your fellow Wizards fans? Because now we're jumping to the Wizards. Love or like emoji when you're checking in. 
Now, let me ask y'all something. Like, seriously. Does anybody want Ben Simmons? Because I just, I need to get that. Let's just throw it out there. That is not at all what was part of the script. And that was not at all what was part of the run of show. But I absolutely wanted to ask, does anybody want Ben Simmons? I just had to get that off to see if anyone did. If at all possible. At all. Had to throw that out there. I see a couple of no's. I see my sister Joy saying she wants them. But hey, listen. Just had to throw that out there. Not going to get in the, the conversation about it. You all know how the rumor mill goes. You all know everybody is just talking about all the potential teams Ben could end up on. Wizards is always one of the teams that ends up on these random lists. But I just had to throw that out there. No truth to any of it. Of course, it's just talking and all of that. But I guess we have to put Ben Simmons on Joy's love list. That's what we're going to do. We're going to put Ben Simmons on Joy's love list. So, Wizards coaching situations. Um, Chase Hughes from NBC Sports Washington has reported, which we talked about last week, that the Wizards may be looking to add a head coach with no head coaching experience. How do you all feel about that? Of course, the names that are still coming up, Wes Unsell Jr., Chauncey Billups, although I believe, now y'all, this has been a long week for me, so I believe the last I heard about Chauncey Billups is that he was in included in the second round of interviews with Portland. So not sure where, you know, how that's going. But the word on the street is reports are saying and stating that the Wizards are looking um, for a head coach that potentially is an NBA assistant, but has not have any has not had any head coaching experience. I really want to know what you all's feelings are on that. I see, Daryl, I see your comment that it doesn't make any sense. Lash, I see your comment, Sam Cassell or Ansel Jr. I've always wondered with Sam Cassell, it seems that he hasn't gotten an opportunity yet to be a head coach. And it seems like many opportunities should have presented themselves, but I'm wondering what's going on there. What's on sale junior continues to, to make sense to a lot of folks for many different reasons, of course, as the wizards head coach, but I really want to know you all's feelings on a head coach with, without any head coaching experience. Is that something that's important to you? So in, in my head, I'm like, I'm, I, I'm still, I don't know. I don't know, you know, because I, I'm, I'm continuously amazed all the time by coaches that have a little experience. And then there's a lot of coaches that, you know, that had experience. We just had a coach that had head coaching experience. Now, he never won, didn't win any championships as a head coach. But, you know, the team has experienced coach head coaches that had been previous head coaches. Others, you see other teams that are, are widely successful. And with with coaches that that's their first head coaching gig, so remains to be seen. I definitely would like to see someone who has a, a focus on player development. Um, it's like we see some of the, some of the players that come through the Wizards and they and they look the exact same that they did when the Wizards first first you know drafted them. So. Would like to see someone who has a focus on player development for certain. Um, but it remains to be seen. We've already said it. Whatever Tommy Shepard does, it better be good for the long haul. Championship driven for certain. Gerald, I see your comment that you want a, a coach who knows defense. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that as well. It's in, it's definitely important for certain. Um, I just don't know. I, I, I don't know. 
It, it, you, you want a coach that, you know, I, I'm always good with the nice guys. I'm always good with the nice girls. I'm always good with the nice folks. But everybody also knows that nice folks sometimes finish last in business. And so, hey, listen, it was awesome and great that Scott, Brooks was a nice guy and a nice person, but it has to be that balance. It has to be that balance of discipline in there as well. I'm not saying you got to be a jerk. I'm not saying you got to be, you know, unbearable to deal with. I'm not saying that. Um, but there has to be the balance of, of, of the nice guy, nice, nice girl, nice person and discipline. Right, because nice folk can also get pushed over. So remains to be seen. And Russ, I see your comment about the issue is also who wants to coach Russ. I'm just saying. I mean, you know, that could be a thing. I don't know if that's a draw. I don't know if that is something that, you know, potential coaches say, I don't know if I want to deal with that attitude or perhaps Westbrook has evolved over time and maybe his attitude isn't, isn't as sharp as it was in previous years. And you see a veteran, more evolved attitude, Westbrook coupled with the, the budding superstar of Bradley Bill and think that, Hey, I can do something with this team. And oh, by the way, not only can I do something with this team, because I have these two superstar players, I can also recruit some folks to come on in and, and be here as well. I don't know what the answer is. We'll know soon. We will know soon um, because we'll have the draft coming up and other things in the next month or so. So it will be interesting. Speaking of the draft, so the draft lottery was this week. As we all know, the Wizards, because they made the uh, playoffs, the Wizards had the 15th pick. So, you know, they, they weren't involved in the, in the draft lottery. Um, I don't think, you know, they weren't. Um, they, they pick a bit later in the draft. The previous two years, what they had, the ninth pick. So now they have the 15th pick. And this was a little amusing. Do you all remember... Trivia, check in on trivia. Who were the last 15th picks? Who were the two last ones? When the Wizards picked 15th, who they pick? The last two. I'm going to give y'all a second to think about it. I'm going to give you all a second to think about it. I'm going to give you a clue. It made me sad. But then again, a lot with the Wizards makes me sad. So that clue is probably not that helpful. Anybody want to guess? Anyone, anyone, anyone? So. They picked 15th before. They picked Troy Brown Jr. And Kelly Oubre Jr. Troy Brown Jr. on the next episode of Where Are They Now? Troy Brown Jr. and Kelly Oubre Jr. Former 15th picks from the, of the Washington Wizards. Who knows who will be on the next episode of that? Perhaps the Wizards can get a Kawhi Leonard at 15. Who knows? Who knows? I say that because Kawhi went 15th when he got drafted in 2011. But enjoy. I see your comments that that was a sneak drag, sneak attack. Joy knows I'm a bit sleep deprived this week. It has been a very long one for me. But not so long that I forgot to throw in a drag. Washington football team fans, Washington football team fans, where are you? Please check in. Like and love emojis. Like and love emojis. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? So listen, 
this is this is the this is the quiet time right now. This is the quiet time on the, with the Washington football team, right? It's it's in between mini camp and training camp. Uh, folks are taking vacations. Are you all taking vacations? Um, are you all getting some rest? So, you know, I hope so. Because I think that this season is going to be a wild ride. I saw an article on the SB Nation um, that I thought was very interesting. And here's why the article outlined some of the offensive players that were ranked pretty high by Pro Football Focus, by PFF. And I said, this is an interesting article. I want to talk to Washington football fans about this article. And I want to talk to them about um, how some of the offensive players are ranked going into the 2021 season. So I wanted to talk through a couple of these if we have time. But, you know, we always make time for the Washington football team on culture from the couch. And I said, hmm, this is pretty good. So let's start here. I'm going to ask you all because we're going to play the guessing game. Where do you all think PFF ranked running back Antonio Gibson? Now, some of you all may already know this. Some of you all may have already read it and have seen the rankings. So where do you all think PFF ranked running back Antonio Gibson? It's good stuff. I think it's pretty decent. Any guesses? Damon has a guess. He says eight. Daryl says 15th. Joyce said don't cheat. Wallace said 12. 11, 12. So Daryl is correct, and perhaps Daryl's already read the article, or he's already read PFF, because they absolutely ranked him as 15th. I thought that was decent. And it's not too far from what you all were mentioning. 11, 12, 8 was a little on the high side, but if you guess around 11, 12, that was good. Daryl, you're on point, 15. I said, hmm, that's impressive. It's very good. So I'm, I was like, all right, they didn't, sh I don't think, I think, I think the rankings are fair. I think the rankings are fair. Absolutely. So I said, Hey, this is cool. This is good. I feel like I like this. Okay. Terry McLaurin, Terry McLaurin, where do you think PFF ranked Terry in their preview of top receivers in 2021. So far, they've been very fair. Very fair. And in, in, in the article, it reads, PFF noted that Terry McLaurin improved his overall output as a second-year receiver in 2020 despite much more conservative quarterback play that saw his average depth of target dip. Hmm. Damon says 19, Daryl says 9th for Terry, Mike says 10. This is very interesting. This is good. Good list. So listen, Terry is ranked in the preview of top receivers in 2021. I think Russ is the closest one. Russ says 16. Terry is ranked at, at 17. He's ranked at 17 with PFF. I thought, again... It's fair. All right. That's fair. It's okay. It's good. It's good. Now, one thing about it, and I know, I, I know, I think I saw Wallace check in. And if Wallace checks in, I know we get to, to Ryan Fitzpatrick. I don't even know if I, if I saw the ranking for Ryan Fitzpatrick. I may have it here in my notes. Um, I know Ryan Fitzpatrick scares a lot of people, but I know one thing. Terry's targets won't dip with Ryan Fitzpatrick because he will at least throw the ball. Throw the ball over there. Now, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Logan Thomas. Logan Thomas. Where do you all think 
in their preview of tight end, where do you think they ranked Logan Thomas? This is a good one. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait because I really want to see what you all think. Daryl said 7th. DeMond said 11. Russ got 11. Wallace got 10. They actually ranked Logan at the 14th best tight end in the league. I thought that was fair. I'm not, I, hey, I thought that was, that was cool. I thought that was good. I thought it was all right. I said, oh, all right. It's not bad. Sounds like based on what the guesses are, you all may feel that that ranking is a bit low. But has him ranked 14. Brandon Sheriff at the guard position and PFF. They love Brandon Sheriff. That's a hint. I just gave y'all a hint at what his ranking is. Going into the season, not last year, going into the season. Daryl says third. DeMar says four. This is Brandon Sheriff. Ranking Brandon Sheriff overall at the guard position. Anyone else? Anyone else? They have Brandon ranked at five. They have him ranked fifth. They have him ranked mm -hmm. fifth. I'm just looking at it and looking at some of the notes they have here. I was like, yeah, they, they love Brandon Sheriff. <clears throat> and that's cool. Y'all love him too, don't you? And Ryan Fitzpatrick, I don't even know. I don't even think. Um, I know that Ryan's, honestly. Um, but I think overall I wanted to share that because they're fair. They're fair. And this is based on who some of the um, uh, stars, if you will, some of the highlights of the offense. That's how they're rated. So I thought it was great, you know, to see Logan on the list. Terry, Antonio Gibson, um, Brandon Sheriff. I do think Chase Rouye was also ranked, you know, pretty fairly um, on the list as well. I did not, I did not know um, Chase's Chase Rouye's. So, hey, I, I, I you know, it's, and, I, and I check these things out. I check these things out. I think that the Washington football team, there's a lot of momentum. There's a lot of talk. There's a, a lot of um, optimism around the Washington football team being just a sleeper team and getting e even further than they were last season. And, 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 you know, of course, with them being the NFC East champs, let's not forget that. They are the reigning NFC East champions. So with them coming into the season as the NFC East champs, there's a lot of a lot of talk that folks are projecting them to win the NFC East again and get even further. Get even further. So it's something to watch. Everybody will be paying attention come training camp and, of course, when the season starts. So we'll all see what happens. We will all see what happens. So, y'all, we've made it another week on Coaching from the Couch. Let me tell you all, if I'm being completely transparent, and Joy will tell y'all, and sometimes I get very transparent on this show, I have literally, and my mom will tell you as well, I have literally been presenting all week at a conference and at a summit. And so, whenever... Um, I, I was like, this has been a long time since I had to dig this deep to find the energy to do the show. But you know what? I just think about what we're here to do. 
from Seawall Sports and Entertainment, and I get an opportunity to talk to the best fans, and I mean that wholeheartedly. Some of the best fans I've ever engaged with in the area. So I had to still show up. So with that being said, y'all, it is always an honor and it's always a pleasure to come here and talk to y'all on Thursdays. Listen, I appreciate y'all checking in. Your girl is probably going to bed right after this. But anyway, you all be blessed, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next week.